Hey there, friends. Uh, what you probably can't hear in the background, but I can, are the sounds of the Hawthorne Street Fair. In recent videos, I've been emphasizing what I call place-based education, which is kind of a different spin on the term from how it's been used in the past because I'm taking into account newer technologies where more people have easier access to YouTube type services, ways to store actual movies, videos, podcasts, sometimes just audio, various formats. I don't need to list them all. I just wanted to say what place-based education means today has changed a little bit. I also, on EduSig, which is a python.org community listserv, regarding education. So SIG stands for Special Interest Group. I don't know who, how, who even remembers that kind of etymology, but SIG, Special Interest Group, I mean, it's like we have that as a focus. So here I'm sharing some of my, what I've learned as a teleteacher, you could call me, someone who shows up as a talking head in the classroom and how useful it is to have a shared storage that's just for the people in the class so they can feel kind of, you know, they're not having a lot of strangers watch them somehow. You have to assure them of that. I mean, I hope that's true and so on, you know. But whatever, however it's implemented, you're not feeling like your space is entirely public and then the importance of a shared chat window to me that's been important so these are just what I've come to for myself and I think I don't think I'm laying down the law here I think I'm just sharing what works for me and then I give examples by linking to these example YouTube's actually not these in particular these are the place-based ones I take two one of somewhat older vintage, which just means a couple weeks ago, actually, a few weeks ago, me going downtown to fetch or going through by way of the Oregon Convention Center to fetch the C60, we could call it a molecule, and there it is between my feet. I'm on this business trip downtown. Now, this was before I knew about the lattice gallery that was opening in the same area that I visited. I went to WeWork that time. So that's a video. And then just yesterday, I guess it was, I made this other video later in time where I do a similar walk. I go downtown. I use public transport as far as the Hawthorne Bridge, and then I walk across. Anyway, both of these videos are tied together and that I'm espousing what I mean by place-based education, which includes being able to hyperlink to other parts of the world. Like, you're not really confined to a neighborhood. You're just using that as a mnemonic base, right? So if you've heard of the mnemonic tradition and memory palaces and so on, it's not a new-with-me idea that you would use your own environment as your memory palace. Like... Memorize or think of certain parts of your own world that you see every day as anchors for all kinds of thoughts or understandings that you have so that you're able to access your own thinking more adroitly. That's partly what the Memory Palace education is all about. You want to be able to have efficient recall of things that are pertinent, right? be able to have relevant thoughts and it's it's a skill you cultivate and one technique I'm not saying the only technique nor the best technique I'm open-minded about what's best but one way to to anchor a memory palace is just use your immediate environment now if you live in a big city like Rome or Portland even that's maybe maybe it's harder to do if you are just living out in a wheat field somewhere and there is not many visual details or if you're going across the desert you know on camels I could see there that you wouldn't be anchoring much to your environment or flying in the cockpit of a jet high up over the clouds 
So then you might have more of a fantasy uh, vista. And a lot of memory palaces are indeed purely fictional and designed entirely for memory palace purposes. And then in between there's like memory furniture. Now I would recommend The Art of Memory by Francis A. Yates to uh, get more insights into all of this. Finally, as an addendum, City of Asylum. So Asylum City, hashtag Asylum City, could be all one word. I've been using that for a vision, a futuristic vision, and doing YouTubes about that. I have a whole playlist with that title. And so that's brought me up against other uses similar often, like I'm discovering more heritage as I use those terms. I also live in what we call Asylum District, which is kind of a um, uh, a new a recent overlay alluding to recent history of the Hawthorne area, which I'll just repeat for a second here and then close out. In that Hawthorne, the name refers to, there is a tree by that name, but in this case, a doctor, a psychiatrist, or someone in charge of Oregon State's first mental hospital run under contract from Salem here in Portland, not right up in my neighborhood, but along Hawthorne Boulevard here. And uh, I've heard a lot of positive things about Hawthorne. I think he's, I think he's good. I'm glad we're remembering him. And street names are indeed an obvious way in which we already use our geography as a mnemonic device or memory palace. This is not some newfangled educational theory. This is everyday practice, right? So Dr. Hawthorne ran an asylum around here, and therefore we call this neighborhood Asylum District. Pretty easy. All right, I'll talk to you in the near future. Enjoy.